100 Facts About the 100 Villains in Pokemon Let's do this! Giovanni Giovanni was an originally the Viridian City gym leader. It was actually this youngster shown in this early concept art drawn by Ken Sugimori. Madam Boss Madam Boss is the founder of Team Rocket and is actually Giovanni's mom. And I don't think we ever actually see her true identity. The Masked Man The Masked Man from the manga is probably one of the strongest trainers in all of Pokemon media. He controlled multiple legendaries, could time travel with Celebi, and even captured a ho using a Delibird. Archer Archer's heart gold and soul silver design is based on the male executives from gold and silver, since at the time they didn't have their own identities. Ariana Due to her appearance, it is theorized that Ariana is actually Silver's mom, since they both have red hair and are related to Team Rocket. Proton It seems that Proton was promoted to executive during Gold and Silver, because in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, he takes the place of a previous Grunt, and the Grunt is even listed as him on this Bulbapedia page. Petro In merging multiple executives together in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Petro created a plot hole. He is present in both the Goldron Radio Tower and the Team Rocket HQ at the same time, and even the guard says there's something wrong with him. Lieutenant Surge In the manga, Lieutenant Surge, along with Koga and Sabrina, were all a part of Team Rocket and were known as the Team Rocket Triad. Koga In the manga, Koga's Golbat can use supersonic in such a way where he can see things from a distance. It basically becomes a telescope. Sabrina In the manga, Sabrina's Alakazam created the Spoons of Destiny, which can point trainers to others who have similar personalities, finding people who are lost, and even helping people with everyday decisions. Blaine In the manga, under Team Rocket, Blaine is the one who creates Mewtwo and shares his DNA to give it life. Due to this, Blaine and Mewtwo have a link between them where they can read each other's minds. Lance Lance was the main antagonist of the Yellow Chapter in the manga, and his goal is to wipe out most of humanity except for those he deemed worthy enough to own Pokemon. Kinda sounds like Light from Death Note. Car Car is the first villain to ever specialize in Steel-type Pokemon. Orm Orm, Car, and Surd are part of the Three Beast Trio, and are based on monsters. Orm is based on Frankenstein's monster, Surd on Dracula, and Car on a werewolf. Surd Surd is based on the Team Rocket admin Car from the EXT Rocket Returns expansion. Jesse Jesse and Missy have always shared the same voice actress in the anime, even when their voice actress changed. James In the Japanese version of the anime, James is shown in two episodes to be a collector of the TCG. The first card that appeared was James's Dark Primate card. Meowth Team Rocket's Meowth is the only Meowth that cannot learn the move Payday. According to him, he used all his smarts to learn how to speak the human language. Cassidy In Pokemon Journeys, Cassidy revealed that she left Team Rocket and now runs a cafe in a snowy village. But there's a running gag in the anime where nobody can remember Butch's name. He's called Biff, Bob, Bill, Hutch, and so on. And this infuriated him so much that he quit Team Rocket and became a waiter. Dr. Namba Dr. Namba is known for studying Pokerus. Domino Domino doesn't use Pokemon. She instead uses her electric tulip for electrocution that can also extend into a staff. Monterey Monterey's name was revealed in the English dub of the anime 347 episodes after it was revealed in the original Japanese series. Before then, she was only known as Giovanni's secretary. Iron Mask Marauder I rate the Iron Mask Marauder's unique Pokeball, the Dark Ball, as the strongest Pokeball of all time, since it's able to catch other trainers' Pokemon, make the Pokemon instantly level 100, and also give them a shadow buff. Professor Sebastian In the anime, Professor Sebastian is the one responsible for creating the invention that forced Magikarp to evolve into the Red Gyarados at the Lake of Rage. Annie and Oakley In the movie Pokemon Heroes Latios and Latios, Annie and Oakley are assigned their mission by Giovanni himself. Interesting enough though, in the Japanese version, they're not assigned by Giovanni, so this was just added plot in the English version. Pierce Pierce has his own Team Rocket uniform that is designed exclusively for him, though you never get to see his complete design because it's only ever shown in the two unaired episodes of the black and white anime. Dr. Zager Dr. Zager is one of the few villains that has access to the technology to revive fossils. Gideon Gideon is the only trainer that you can battle in Fire Red and Leaf Green who uses a Porygon. Maxi According to a Team Magma Grunt in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire in the Magma Hideout, Archie and Maxi used to be on the same team before they were in Team Aqua and Team Magma. Courtney In the manga, during the Ruby and Sapphire art, Courtney actually dies from the final battle, but is brought back to life by Celebi's time travel, and afterwards she pursues a normal life and begins cultivating berries. Tabitha In Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, it is revealed that Tabitha is 27, the same age as Cyrus. Seriously, what's with these villains being super young? That's literally my age. Blaze Blaze is a manga exclusive Team Magma admin who used illusions before Zoroark made it cool. He uses his Slugma to manipulate heat to create illusions, and that earned him the nickname The Shadow of Fire. Brody Brody is a Team Magma member who only appeared in two episodes of the anime. In each of these episodes, the mark under his eye is a different color as well. First it's green, and then it's orange. Butler Butler and his girlfriend Diane debuted in the movie Jirachi Wishmaker, and as it turns out, they actually make a cameo appearance in the Japanese Sinnoh games as ace trainers. 
Archie. In Legends Arceus, you can find a picture of a man who resembles Archie in one of the pro clan houses, and Maxi in one of the diamond clan houses. This potentially shows that Archie and Maxi's rivalry extends to their ancestors. Matt. Matt was originally going to be a generic tough guy in the manga, though the writers found this idea boring and decided to write him as the most sensitive and nervous of the admins of Team Aqua. Shelly. In her first appearance in the English dub of the anime, Shelly was referred to as Isabel mistakenly. Well, Tactical Commander Isabel, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Amber. In the manga, Amber's signature attack is using the water as Gorbis craze to make ripples as strong as Hydro Pump. Because of this, he earned himself the nickname The Drop of Horror. Cyrus. Cyrus says to himself that Pokemon are not friends, only tools to achieve his vision. Though, at the same time, he has a curl bat, a Pokemon that evolves via friendship. Mars. Mars' name in the Spanish version of the games is Venus, for some reason. Jupiter. Jupiter is the only person in the anime to have their name changed in the Israel dub, since because the word Jupiter in Hebrew is Jupiter. Saturn. Saturn's blue hair is likely a reference to the blue world ray that occasionally appears on the planet Saturn. Charon. Charon's Japanese name is Pluto, and the name Charon itself is a moon of Pluto, so I guess he got a demotion when the games were translated to English. N. N has a trainer ID of 2, which makes you think, who has trainer ID number 1? Colrus. Colrus has one of the best themes, just listen. Getsis. Getsis is the first antagonist to try to actually kill you. Luckily though, N was there to stop him. Zinzolin. By the end of Black and White 2, Zinzolin is essentially the sole surviving member of Team Plasma, and even remarks the protagonist as his enemy. Ryoku. Other than Getsis, Ryoku and the other seven stages have color-based names, which are based on red, brown, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Rude. Of the seven stages, Rude had the most loyalty to N, and the trust was so strong and mutual that N trusted him to watch over Zora. But I guess N trusted him a bit too much, because Rude ends up giving away the Zora to the player. Gorm. Gorm only speaks once in the entirety of Black and White 2, and it's during the postgame in Pinwall Forest. Jalo. In the manga, Jalo caught each of the forces of nature with a single Pokeball. His RNG must be out of this world. Bronius. In Black and White, Bronius gives you the TM69. Nice. The Shadow Triad. The Shadow Triad probably has one of the coolest trainer animations ever. Volo. Volo battles you with the most Pokemon in franchise history. He first uses his party of six Pokemon, then Garatina, and then Garatina again in his origin form, which in total is eight different Pokemon if you got the Garatina twice. Whitley. Whitley was once a member of Team Plasma and sided with N to liberate Pokemon from evil humans. Lissandre. Lissandre is most likely immortal due to the radiation from the ultimate weapon, which means that he's likely buried alive under the tons of rocks that piled on him when the ultimate weapon collapsed. So essentially, every game after Pokemon X and Y, Lissandre is alive, just sitting there. Zorosic. Many evil teams try to revive themselves after being defeated once, like with Neo Team Rocket and Gold and Silver. With Team Flare, Zorosic was the one who tried to revive them, it was called the Neo Team Flare. Mabel. There are two characters named Mabel that are spelled differently. You have Mabel the Team Flare Scientist and Mabel the Mega Evolution Expert from the anime, which to my knowledge is one of the few times this has happened. Celoja. Celoja shares the same voice actress who voices the Pokemon Altaria. And here's how they both sound. Spread out! Surround it! <laughs> Bryony. Bryony literally failed every mission she was assigned. So I guess there's people out there who are worse than Jesse and James. Aliana. Aliana and the other Team Flare scientists have initials that correspond to the types of solar radiation, which are A, B, C, M, and X. The scientists' hair color also indicate the ascending intensity of these rays, except for Xerostic. Malva. Malva is the only Elite Four member to be a part of a villainous team in the games and anime. She's also the first Elite Four member to lose on screen against a trainer that's either an Elite Four member or a champion, with that trainer being Alan. Guzma. There's a strong chance that Guzma has a rivalry with Kalili in golf, since he has broken golf clubs in his house with also a bunch of silver and bronze trophies, which might imply that he broke his clubs in anger from losing to her. They also have similar battle poses to support this theory. Plumeria. In the manga, Plumeria tried to assassinate Luzumi with poisoned arrows while disguised as the female protagonist, Moon, but her attempt was stopped by Lily, Sinna, and Dexio. Gladian. Gladian is the only trainer in Sun and Moon that has a Team Skull trainer class. But what's weird is that apparently he's not even a part of Team Skull because they literally say they will never join. So it's unclear whether or not Gladion is an actual villain or not. Team Skull Trio. Apparently the voice actor for Tup said that he made his voice based on Jesse Peekman from Breaking Bad. And this is what he sounds like. You hand that Eevee over to me right now! Okazaki. Okazaki is designed and named after his voice actor Taku Okazaki, who is a musician in Japan. 
Luzamine. In the anime, Luzamine actually helps Ash and his classmates deal with the Ultra Beast. So supposedly she's an antagonist in that universe, but I wouldn't trust her. Faba. Faba's strange large glasses are designed to resemble Faba beans, which as you might have guessed, Faba was named after. Chairman Rose. Chairman Rose being evil is one of the biggest plot twists in Pokemon history, since it literally comes out of nowhere. And his motives are pretty dumb, considering that he enacted the second darkest day to avoid energy crisis a thousand years in the future. Especially since during the champion battle, like, what the heck, man? Olena. Olena's ace Pokemon is her Gigantamax Garbodor, which means that she technically owns a Master Ball, whether she knows it or not. Avis. The Shadow Tyranitar that Avis uses in his final battle is holding a nugget, which might be the only case in Pokemon where an NPC is holding an item that has no use in battle. Grievel. If you purify every Shadow Pokemon before battling Grievel for the final time, an alternate cutscene will play. It will show the main character Michael putting away the Snag Machine since he has no further use for it. Nascor. Nascor is the only trainer in any Pokemon game to have no battle music. The only sound you hear is a crowd cheering. Mirror B. Mirror B's appearance was made to resemble Michael Jackson. He even wears a single glove and does a moonwalk in the beginning of the game. Gonzap. Gonzap's Skarmory knows Hyper Beam, even though he can't learn that move. So, he's a cheater. Wes. Wes is the first and only playable main character who was once an official member of a criminal organization. And the criminal organization was Team Snagum. Baruichi. Baruichi is the leader of Team Great Rocket for the second Pokemon card Game Boy game. So that means we have Team Rocket, Neo Team Rocket, Team Great Rocket, Team Rainbow Rocket, and Team Go Rocket. That's a lot of branches. Gordor. Gordor is the leader of the Go Rock Squad, which is the evil team in Pokemon Ranger. And that's pretty much the only interesting thing about him. Gengar. Gengar reveals a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon that he is a human who touched Ninetales' tail. And if you didn't know about Ninetales' legend, it is said that those who touch the tail of a Ninetales will be cursed for a thousand years. Skunk Tank. Skunk Tank is the leader of the original team skull for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and is the first leader of an antagonist group who cannot be fought. Darkrai. Like most mythical Pokemon, Darkrai is genderless. However, in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, he is always referred to as a male. Though, this doesn't extend to the gameplay, because if you use a tract on him with a female Pokemon, it doesn't work. Bitter Cold. Bitter Cold attacks with three different moves that are labeled as unused in the game's coding, even though they are used. Also, they have 99 PP for each of them, so you can technically stall it out if you live long enough. Dark Matter. Dark Matter shares both its English and Japanese name with Dark Matter from the Kirby series, and they even look similar to one another. Maybe they're related somehow. Blake Hall. Blake Hall's name is a corruption of the term Black Hole, which so happens to be his Japanese name. And if you read Brian Saul's diary, you learn that Blake's actual name is White Hall, which is a corruption of the term White Hole. Edward. Edward is probably the only villain who's a real doctor and treats actual sick and elderly patients, which is pretty odd given that he wants to rule over the world. Roger Clifford. Roger Clifford was so desperate for attention in the Detective Pikachu game that he tried to drug every Pokemon at a Hugh City Festival just so his news network could get exclusive coverage for it. Hunter J. Hunter J and her crew likely died after being hit by Uzi, Mesprit, and Azel's future side attacks, since her airship fell into a whirlpool before exploding, technically making Lake Valor a graveyard. Malamar. Malamar is one of the few Pokemon in the anime that is completely evil, and their goal is to take over the world. Lawrence the Third. Lawrence the Third is a huge collector, and the first item he ever had in his collection was an ancient Mew Pokemon card. And with this, this is the only time in the English dub that a Pokemon card was shown. Also, fun fact, the ancient Mew card was supposed to have a bigger role in the movie, but was later scrapped from the plot. The Phantom. The inspiration for the Phantom comes from the character Tuco from the Western movie The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Zero. Zero's suit looks ridiculous, and that's all I have to say about him. Marcus. Marcus falls off a cliff at the end of the movie Arceus and the Jewel of Life, but after the credits, it is revealed that he survived the fall and is seen working in Machina's town fields with Demos. Green's Kodai. Green's Kodai has special psychic powers that allows him to see in the future, and he only uses these powers to get rich quickly. And if you're wondering what other characters have special powers, you should check out my Superhumans video. You'd be surprised. Damon. Damon might be the first character to use different Pokemon depending on the version. And the funny thing is, he's not even a video game character. Because in the movie Pokemon White, Vitini and Zekrom, he uses a Runiclus. While in the movie Pokemon Black, Vitini and Reshiram, he uses a Gothitelle. Hoopa Unbound. Hoopa's split personality between his confined and unbound forms put it in a weird spot because it's both the protagonist and antagonist of his own movie. Alva. Alva is one of the few trainers that have a shiny Pokemon, with his being a Gengar that can Mega Evolve. Dr. Zed. Dr. Zed might be the most evil villain we've seen in Pokemon, because he might be the one and only antagonist that has successfully killed an important character, and on top of that has killed even multiple people. And finally, for the last villain, we have Mindy. Mindy is a villain for training you a haunter with an Everstone, and I will never forgive her. And there you go, 100 facts about the 100 villains in Pokemon. Hope you enjoyed it.
And if you enjoyed this video, check out my other video where I go over the protagonists in Pokemon. I got a fact for every one of them, so check it out right here. And also don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.